I want to dive right in to talking with my sister Lee today. She is a dietitian for the Indianapolis Colts. No big deal. Um, and if you have 400 questions, you're not alone because every time I tell someone what her job is, they also have 400 questions. So I thought, why not ask her some of them? We talk about so many wonderful things, things that I didn't even know as her triplet sister, which is crazy to me. Um, we talk about of course, comparison and individuality, and even people who told her that she couldn't get to where she is today because they're crazy, because look at her now. And I'm so proud of her, and let's hear about her journey. Hi, sister. Hi. Thanks How are you? Me. This is so fun. I wish you were with me at my house, but you live in Indiana, so that's not possible. I you know. Luckily, we've had a couple weeks over the last month and two to hang out so and so fun yeah so the reason I brought you on today is because I want to talk about your current job and how you got to this point talk a lot on this channel about individuality and um comparison things like that so I want to take everyone mm -hmm. on a journey of how you got to your current job which okay. is that you work for the Colts and you are their dietitian and so you were there right now right are you at the complex Yes, we're at work and I'm just stepping away for a minute. So you're stepping away. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for letting us steal her. Yeah. It's and good. you're it's in your office. Busy. It's a little mm -hmm. bit less busy right now. Well, I mean, it's quite busy, but not the guys are in the building right now because we're preparing for training camp. Mm -hmm. so training camp is where we're preparing for the season. So we move off site for training camp rather than training here. So mm -hmm. we're getting ready for a big move here soon. Right. Okay. So I want to talk about all of that, but let's start with, I feel like everyone's gonna make, how did you get to this point? Cause if, whenever I tell people, this is your job, they kind of look at me like, I, like, how do you even get to that point? Right. Yeah. So let's just rewind how I want to even like rewind to when you were deciding what you wanted to major in in college. Yeah. I think it started there. Cause when many yeah. people see them, I think more people now are familiar with the word dietitian, but I would say with Instagram and all of the social media platforms now, many people see the word nutritionist. So they're like, you could call me a nutritionist, but I'm really a dietitian. You, for example, could be a nutritionist or Sarah, whoever on Instagram could be a nutritionist <laughs> providing advice of what I eat in a day or, you know, all of those. Yes. And we let them live their life and do that. However, they yeah. didn't go school to study that. So that's what mm -hmm. I did. Um, growing up, like, you know, we, food was a very big passion for our family. And we found out at a young age, I always talk about like in fourth grade, I remember is when we found out that our family like had celiac disease, the gene. Uh -huh. celiac, and so we had to go yep. gluten free. And this was in fourth grade when no one did this. You couldn't go to a restaurant and get, I remember like, I remember at snack time, because I'm oh. ready to get snacks. I mean, yeah. I still eat snacks every hour now, mm -hmm. but they we, they would give goldfish to everyone, but we couldn't eat goldfish. So we were eating these like weird power bars before like any gluten-free was a thing. And that was just kind of where I first learned yes. like food and what you put into your body can impact you, not just like mm -hmm. as a human, but like for me, it interests me as food as for performance rather than helping super unhealthy people that that sounds bad and I don't we I worked in a hospital so I understand that but I wanted to do it like I felt so much better when we went gluten-free so how could I learn more about mm -hmm. food to help people feel better with what they're putting in their body so I think it kind of started then we didn't appreciate it as fourth graders so no. thank you mom. I was just so angry that I couldn't eat the goldfish and everyone would always ask a million questions like so why are you eating that or bar peeling the cheese off of a pizza at a pizza <gasps> party eating the cheese and not the crust god bless. well that was when we knew we couldn't have dairy so then that was before no it was i would eat the cheese instead of the crust oh, you would eat the cheese instead of the crust yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's even maybe grosser <laughs> yeah. i know oh gosh lee we've been through it okay so fast that's forward what... high school yeah. college and going into college i like wasn't sure exactly what i wanted to do i knew i wanted to do something in the medical field I just wait didn't... really quick really quick sorry did you do anything in high school related to this like any jobs or I'm trying to remember. Just like we just played volleyball, so we ate all the time and realized, oh my god, yeah. we're so in young women, you have to eat so much to uh -huh. perform. And and we learned a lot. Like we would have pregame meals in high school, like That's right. you know what that was, but we would crush 
shout out Allie, like Hollyhock Hill before game and we're crushing <laughs> fried chicken and mashed potato cheese before game. And no wonder we were feeling a little bit fatigued, but we'd still. Right. You're like, I just ate a four course fried chicken dinner. Why do I feel terrible before a game? Talk about when she ate too much before a game. Um, Allie, when no, Allie did. Kristen, she couldn't, our other sister couldn't, she ended up having to not, she couldn't play a game because she ate too much. <laughs> <laughs> love you Kristen. <laughs> yeah when I got to IU they had a really strong dietetic program so dietetics is like the study of nutrition and so it's mm-hmm. essentially the same all the same courses as pre-med you just take a few less like physics and maybe like one chemistry class that they didn't take so we were all in all of the classes with all of the med like people that wanted to go to med school and wow. then- nutrition courses as well so that's where I was like this is what I want to do and I knew that I wanted to do sports nutrition because we had a lady that came in from IU that worked for the sports nutrition program at IU she came and spoke to a class and I was like that's what I want to do mm. so when I was what was her name Amy Friel and now she's like the head of our organization like we're all a part really? of the association so yeah it's <gasps> awesome Shout out Amy. I know I told her that I think a couple of years ago. I'm like, you really? made like actually pers- I didn't know that there was careers that I could do this. So she kind of was the person who was like showed you that it was possible. Yeah. So you talked to Amy and that's when you knew that you could go to one of our classes, but yes. Yes. So that's when you knew that you didn't have to just work in a hospital. So you took all the courses. Did you have to do an internship or anything? Yeah, I would wor- I worked a lot of different things in the summer or during the school year. Um, So I did quite a bit of, I had a professor that worked at a long-term care facility. So with older patients. And so I did um, what was called food service rotation. So when you're, you get matched to a program your senior year of college. However, you're taking a bunch of different courses throughout college to prepare you for this you're taking Mm -hmm. organic chemistry regular chemistry food chemistry we're in a lab cooking meringue pies and understanding (laughs) the breakdown of how eggs or egg whites or sugar impact the chemistry of food we're like working on cadavers and you're seeing the inside of their bodies and you're seeing where like the heart is or different arteries or veins and you understand how that impacts the body and what food can do to impact it but um you actually saw like the inside of a body and what food did to those different parts of your body. Like the celiac trunk, and we I say that because we talk about celiac disease, and yeah. you're like, okay, celiac trunk, okay, if that's not properly working, you malabsorb your nutrients. You're not absorbing calcium, iron specific nutrients that way. But like, it was more so understanding the body, and then we study it, like different nutrient profiles paired with that. You know what I mean? That is fascinating. So, and just so people know, celiac is like a gluten allergy. Like, like your body cannot, you have a gluten allergy, but your body cannot process gluten. And this isn't like some cute gluten allergy that you're trying to be healthy. This is like like gluten free. Yeah. Right. This is like, if you eat it, even have cross contamination, like something's touching something that has gluten on it, like a toaster. If you ate that, you would have a severe reaction. Yeah. And everyone's reactions are different, but yes. Good to know. Okay, so I want to talk about you getting matched, but I do have a question because, you know, between the three of us, I like to talk about with triplets specifically comparison and your own journey. So I don't think people know this, that sophomore year, Kristen transferred, our other sister Kristen transferred to the same college as you and Mm -hmm. was studying the same thing as you. Well, she was originally nursing. She went to Kentucky and then she transferred to IU and joined the dietetic program like me. So we both were in all of the same classes, all of the same courses. Um, So we did everything essentially the same. So two questions. One, how did you feel when you found out she was transferring? Mm -hmm. And B, how did you feel when she, when you found out she was switching to dietetics? Yeah, I was actually very excited, obviously, because um, I was it's nice to have your sister and to do things together study together I mean Mm. I had my own friends before but it was nice to have her do the program with me as well but with that you're like okay how are you doing in class what was your grade Mm -hmm. better and Kristen is just way better 
student than me and just like different capacities. Like I'm not a good test taker. Like it takes me longer to process information. Um, and so she always excelled. So I think I was like, damn, I'm not at that level, but I know I still have a passion for this. So, um, I don't think as I've learned and grown like a grade or a report card or your GPA is not a true indicator of you as a practitioner or your like skills to be a professional that being said like it helps like you can't flunk out and <laughs> just get by and be like right. oh, I'm be a dietitian no you still have to work your ass off and like pass the courses but it just can look different for different people so what would you say to a triplet lead if two of them or three of them were all st- like studying the same thing or even triplets who are in high school or any stage of their life where they're going to start comparing themselves to the yeah. other triplet I think it's easy to say, don't do it, but yeah. it's hard. But I think what helped us is as young kids, we were put into different homerooms. So we weren't in every class together. We maybe all took the same mm-hmm. class, but we weren't and we didn't go from room to room together. So I think that was helpful. Um, but I'd say like, give yourself grace. Like you're meant to be different. And just because they got a gr- that grade doesn't mean you have to get that grade and just mm-hmm. work through that process and be okay with it. And if you have the passion, then just keep going with it. Yeah, don't give up. Don't give up. Yeah. That's so wonderful. Did any teacher in college try to compare you to? For sure. And I had a teacher oh, this for wow. this like as we were like trying to all speak to the matching part that I had a professor who was like and not to nag this person, but they were the director of our program and they were very clinical based. So they didn't really necessarily Mm -hmm. see the role of a dietitian in the sports setting or any of that. It's still like a new field. Um, Mm -hmm. So they're like, you're like, why would you want to go into sports? Like you're not Mm going to get into a program with these grades, blah, blah, blah. And like, mind you, my grades were good. They just weren't a 4.2. She said this to you. Yes. So what's her name? Where do I need to go? I know. I was just saying this to my intern too. I'm like, look at me now. Um, Wait, Lee, no, but Lee, that's like a huge thing, right? Like that's actually really important for people to know that. Yes. So I went through the matching program and I didn't get matched my first time. And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I failed. Like, I'm not- Is this lady right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But I was like, you know what? I know that this is what I want to do. It's just not the time for me to get matched right away. Mm -hmm. So it was the fall. So I had like a month off in the fall. Cause I, I reapplied for a program and I got into this distance program that specialized in sports nutrition. And so it worked out, but I had a month off and I was able to go to Bali for a month and study yoga and become a certified yoga instructor. That's what I always wanted to do. But if mm-hmm. I would have been matched the first time, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So it was like one of those moments where we're like, don't give up when another door closes, you might be like, I don't see the light, but yeah. there's a reason that it happens. And then that this worked out for me. And so I got matched into a program and I didn't start until January or November, December, January, something like that. Um, and I ended up choosing Notre Dame. You have to get supervised hours in a lot of different sectors, one being food service. So I worked in a school system, one being clinical. So I worked in a hospital, the other being community. So I worked at a corporate wellness company and then I chose um a specialty in sports nutrition that's where I spent most of my time so I actually didn't start at Notre Dame until that following October because I did all my other rotations and Notre Dame was my last stint but as I fast forward to Notre Dame I started as an intern there um and I went all in like work I worked mostly with football there but Notre Dame has a bunch of Olympic sports which is like basketball or men's soccer or swimming and diving so I got the opportunity to work and learn from the other dietitians there and work with all of those different types of athletes and being there I was like yep this is what I want to do that's like when you knew that you were on the right track for sure and I loved it it's a grind like it's not glamorous people are like wow you're a dietitian for a team and now it's evolved and grown I have more help where I have more time to do things but it's a lot of like food service based where we're stocking Gatorade and Pedialyte and different products and fridges and um, you're doing meal plans, you're helping guys run body composition tests. So you're understanding how their bodies are built and all of this correlate 
how food impacts their body. We're doing hydration reports and then you're at practices and you're helping hydrate and fuel the team before, during, and after practice, all to set them up for success for game day. But so pretty much if they win, they can thank you. No, but <laughs> we're like a little teeny teeny. No, Lee, but seriously, couple. like if you think about back to what you said about Kristen, she couldn't play the game because she ate the wrong thing. Yeah. Think, think about has there ever been a case with one of the players who ate the wrong thing that you didn't know about who were they're like, dang, I shouldn't have eaten that? Oh, for sure. Or like have had a food poisoning or some like bug and I like, worked with oh them like during the game. I'm like, okay, we'll get through it, but you just people you have played with the st- with a stomach bug. Oh, for sure. Uh, wow, Lee, that's insane. Um, okay, so you're working at Notre Dame. Yep. And I feel like you were really comfortable there. Like you were really happy there. And when did you see the window open up for opportunity to work for the Colts? And how did you know that you wanted to take it? Yeah, I, well, I started from the bottom and worked my way up there. Like, so I saw how every role was. I was an intern and then I became an associate, you know, like assistant director and ended, ended my stint there as a director of sports nutrition there, which was really cool. So it gave me the confidence that I knew I could do this and lead a group of people and successfully take care of a team. Funny enough, like before the Colts a year, a year before I was offered this job, I had interviewed um, with a different organization in in the league and um, something in my gut didn't feel right. So I didn't take it. Mm -hmm. So I went back to Notre Dame, continued my ways. And then this job came up and um, this is so exciting. I just love any time that someone listens to their intuition. How did you go about telling them no? And was it scary? And did people think you were crazy for saying no? Yes, to all of the above. I, it was so <laughs> scary. Like, am I making a stupid decision by not taking this next step? Like, what am I doing? Um, yeah, but, but you just knew. Yeah, I knew. I was like, it's going to work out. Like, I, I yeah. feel, I felt like I was already in a really good spot. Yeah. So, it wasn't scary to say no because I felt confident in where I was. Um, Ooh, that's good. But then this job came up. It was, I think Kristen, our sister, was the first person to send it to me because she really wanted me to move home to Indy. And I was like, mm-hmm. I'd only move back if it was like for the Colts or for wow. like that. And then a few other people sent it to me. So then where do people even see job postings like this? Um like on different job boards, like I suppose, or like if you're connected in the organizations, people will. So it. if someone's watching this and they're like, I want to get into this and th- they hear that, they're like, oh, well, wh- how would they possibly send that job to you? So like a job board or just being Google. connected? Yeah. Be Stalking connected. open jobs. <laughs> stalk, stalk people. I'm like really terrible at looking at LinkedIn, but people use that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But, and also I'm sure if you're in that world, you hear about jobs that are open. Right. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Um, so when Kristen first sent it to you, did you know right away that you're like, okay, I'm going to apply? I said, yes, I will apply for this. Yeah. I did right yeah. away. So got all my stuff together, send it in immediately. Um, and I didn't know what was going to happen, but I was like, the least that can happen is that I get in the interview, you know? So then I got mm-hmm. an interview um, and then went through the whole interview process and was offered the job. And now I'm going into my third season. Lee, when you were doing the interview for the Colts, did they ask you about being a triplet? Um, No, I think they, when they said, tell me a little bit about yourself, I mentioned that we are a triplet, but we we don't go, we're straight to business in these interviews. Except, oh, except to be on like my first rounds. But then as I continued in the process, like they care a lot about the human here at the Colts, which I really value so it was more getting to know me like why I really wanted to do this would I be a proper fit with the staff that already exists here and the players um so yeah they like some people still like most people know I'm a triplet here but sometimes when a guy finds out they're like the hell you're a triplet (laughs) I was gonna say what do people question everyone asks always is are you identical like that's the first question I was gonna ask you what people say when they find out you're a triplet like let me see a picture Yes. I mean, I have photos saved because yeah, I'm just I'm like, now I just know like, okay, this is what I'll show. <laughs> Did you, wait, which photo do you show? I, I think probably I'm trying to think what I show. I don't know. Like I'll show like a baby one and then I'll show us like maybe when we were in California or something like Please, that. Same baby photo, California. Cause we did a little photo shoot here in California. That is so funny. I have to show both. Cause I already know they're going to want to see both ages. Totally. Um, and I, are there anyone, um, is anyone at the Colts or any of the staff 
or do any of the players have multiples? Yes. Like, okay, there, really? are, there are a couple guys that are twins. Oh. Girl and guy. I think it's all girl and guy. And then one of our players just had twin boys. Really? Um, yeah, so we have multiples around here. Mm-hmm. Do they ask you for advice? Uh, not necessarily advice. We just kind of talk about it. Like, we all talk about a lot of different things. So, yeah. It just comes up. Yeah. The journey. Yeah. Okay, we'll do a couple um fun rapid questions. Favorite snack to serve to you the players? Oh god. There's so many. Recently they've been on like these like we make these pizza pockets but it's like a nice dough with like like a nice kind of protein that they love. Yeah. They crush like uncrustables um <laughs> like we make like homemade peanut jelly. Like sometimes that we feed them like kids before a game cuz you just need like quick sugar to feed them. Um acai oh. bowls um those are all good answers wraps. yeah love it um okay how does it feel to be one of the few women working in this type of environment and what would you say to other women who want to get into it um I feel very lucky to be in an environment where people support us and like there are some like obstacles sometimes but it's really expanded since I first started working in athletics to now but Mm -hmm. own your space when you're confident and you're professional and you build relationships and trust with people they'll doors will open so that's what I'd say that's wonderful I'm proud of you thank you thanks for having me